Hello everyone, this is Dr. Webb. In this video we're going to be finding uh, the absolute maximum and minimum functions and then we're going to be applying this to uh, some word problems which are called optimization problems. So first let's talk about absolute maxima and absolute minima. So you remember a, a relative maximum is is a point that's the largest point in its in some interval around it. Um, what an absolute maximum is, is it is the largest point over the entire domain. So not over just some necessarily small uh, interval, but over all the possible x values. So it is the largest possible value of the function. Um, the absolute minimum, vice, you know, vice versa, is the smallest value. So not just on some small interval, but on the entire domain. Okay. So there's a couple different options here that... that about what can happen, and it really boils down to what's true about the domain. So first of all, if the domain is the real line, then not every function necessarily has an absolute max or an absolute min. Um, it could have one but not the other, it could have both, it could have neither. And you know, some, some quick examples of this, um, if you think about something like a line or a cubic, neither of these have highest values so the or smallest values um, if you have something like a parabola you know say this is a downward parabola well this has an absolute max but no absolute min so to actually have some function that has both an absolute min and an absolute max you have to have something kind of like that going on okay um, if a function does have an absolute max or min then that is going to occur at a critical point of the function so critical point remember this is what we talked about in the last video this is some place where the first derivative is equal to zero so the function is horizontal or the first derivative doesn't exist Um, and then, so the way that we find these absolute maxes or mins, are we going to check, we're going to check the value at all the critical points, and then we're going to compare this against what happens at the limits. So if, if the limit goes off to infinity, there's no possible way that there's going to be a maximum. If the limit goes off to negative infinity, then there's no possible way there's a minimum. Okay. So... Let's find the absolute maximum uh, and or minimum to this function. Uh, 1 over x squared minus 4x plus 7, um, if such a thing exists. So, what's the first thing that we need to do? Well, we got to find the critical points. And to find the critical points, first we have to find the first derivative. So to find the first derivative for this function, uh, I can think about it as being x squared minus 4x plus 7 raised to the minus 1 power. And then to take the derivative of this, we're going to use the chain rule. So our outside function here is x to the minus 1. Our inside function is the quadratic. So derivative of the outside is minus 1 over x squared. Uh, derivative of the inside is going to be 2x minus 4. So putting this together, I have the outside, derivative of the outside with the inside plugged in. And then multiplied by 2x minus 4. So I can write it like this. Okay. So now to find the critical points, now that we have the derivative, we're going to set this equal to 0. Now the denominator here, the quadratic on the bottom, that's not going to affect getting a 0 at all. In fact, that's always going to be uh, positive for all values 
Um, so we just have to figure out when the top is going to be equal to zero. So this is when minus 2x plus 4 equals zero, which is when 4 equals 2x. So we have a critical point at x equals 2. And that's our only critical point. Um, now we also said we also need to check and see what happens to this function as, as it goes off to positive or, or negative infinity. So if we take the limit of this as x goes to infinity, minus 4x plus 7, well, we have a quadratic on the bottom, a constant on the top. The quadratic is going to go off to infinity. And so 1 divided by infinity, 1 divided by something going off to infinity, that's going to 0. And in fact, that's the same thing that's going to happen as we go off to minus infinity. So we have a critical value at 2. Uh, the function, as we go out further and further, is going to zero both ways. What's the value of the function at 2? If I plug in 2 here, I have 1 over 4 minus 8 plus 7. So that would be 1 third, I believe. Yeah, minus 4 plus 7 equals 3, yep. Okay, so I notice that I have a critical point at 1 third, and then it, after that, it's going towards 0, so 1 third to 0. So if it's starting at 1 third at x equals 2, and to the left it's going to 0, that means that it's decreasing the rest of the way. To the right, it's going to zero. That means it's, it's so it's increasing going up to one third, decreasing going down to one third. So one third is our highest point. That's our absolute max. And there is no absolute min. No absolute min. So our absolute max is in fact the point to one third. And if we go to the next slide, this is actually a graph of that function. And you can see at x equals two, the value of the function is one third. So this is the point to one third. It's the highest point here. So it is the absolute max. And then on either side of it, it's going down to zero. But it never actually hits zero, just gets closer and closer to zero. So there is no point that's an absolute min. No matter how far out you go, if you keep on going further out, either way, you're going to get points that are closer to zero. Okay, so if the domain, instead of being the whole real line, is just a closed interval, then it's a completely different story. So if we're working on a closed interval, any continuous function is going to have both a max and a min on the closed interval, right? And so for the closed interval, the fact that it has its endpoints, so for this closed interval a, b, it has the point x equals a and x equals b, that makes it, that's critically important for it, for having both a max and a min, okay? Um, where these, these absolute maxes and mins recur, well, they're still gonna occur at either a critical point or they can occur at one of these two endpoints at either x equals a or x equals b. So here's an example. We have a cubic x cubed minus 3x squared minus 9x plus 5. And we're trying to find the absolute max or min just on this interval minus 2 to 5. So we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to look for critical points. And then we're going to check the value at the critical points and the check check the value at the ends of the intervals. Whatever's the biggest value is going to be the max. Whatever the smallest value is, is going to be the min. So let's start off with getting the derivative. This is a cubic, so that's straightforward enough. So I'm going to have 3x squared 
minus 6x minus 9, the plus 5 goes to 0. And to find critical points, I'm setting this equal to 0. I can factor a 3 out. I have x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And I believe this factors as x plus 1 into x minus 3. Yep. Yep. So here's what we're going to do. So we have the set equal to zero. So our critical points are at x equals minus one and three. Our endpoints are at x equals minus two and five. And so these are the values that we're going to check. Plug back into the original function to find their values. So if I plug in minus two, minus two is going to give me, let's see, minus eight, minus three times four gives me minus 12, minus 18, oh, that's going to be a plus 18, plus five, so this is minus 20, Plus 23 gives me a 3. Now let's erase all that. So f of minus 2 is 3. Uh, similarly, for minus 1, that would give me minus 1, minus 3, plus 9, plus 5. So that's 14 minus 4 gives me 10. And then I also need to check f of 3. So when I plug 3 into here, I get 27 minus 27 minus 27 plus 5. So 27 minus 27, those two cancel, then minus 27 plus 5, that's going to give me minus 22. And then last but not least, if I plug 5 into here, ooh, that's going to be pretty big. So let's see. 5 cubed is... 125 minus 3 times 5 squared, so 3 times 25 is 75, minus 45 plus 5, so let's see, 130 minus 120, and so I believe that gives also gives me 10. Double check. Uh, 125 minus 75, so that would be give me 50. Minus 45 would give me 5. Plus 5 gives me 10. Yep. So f of 5 equals 10. So one of these values, at least one of these is the absolute max. At least one of these is the absolute min. How do we tell? Well, the absolute max is going to be where it's the biggest. So we have 10 and 10 are the two biggest values here. So the absolute max is at minus 1, 10, and 5, 10. It's okay to have two absolute maxes if they have the same value there. And then the absolute min is at the smallest value. And so we'd say the absolute min is at... 3 minus 22, because that's where the uh, y value is the smallest. Okay, now applying this to word problems. So these are called optimization problems. It's a word problem where you're asked to maximize or minimize one quantity given some kind of constraint. Okay, 
So the idea is, is once we find the appropriate function, you know, that's the same as, as what we've just been doing, we find the absolute max and then the same as we did before. We're going to find and check critical points and endpoints. So let's do an example, see what we're talking about. Okay, so this example is, what are the dimensions of the largest rectangular pin in area which is enclosed using exactly 100 feet of fencing? Okay, so first things first, let's draw a picture. It's going to be a rectangle. So I can roughly draw a rectangle. Rectangles have length and width. Okay, and so the information given is that we, this wants to be built using 100 feet of fencing so that 100 feet is going to be the sum of the sides. Right, so we know that 100 is equal to L plus W. And then we're trying to maximize area. And how do you find area of a rectangle? Well, it's length times width. Okay. Now looking at this area function, well, we've been maximizing things with, with one variable. And I've got two variables over here. So how do I get this down? I'm looking at length times width right here. How do I get this down to one variable? Well, my constraint function right here, 100 equals L plus W, I can solve for either L or W and use that uh, to replace in there. So I will take my constraint function, rewrite it as 100 minus L equals W, and so now I can rewrite my area function, plugging this in, as being L times, instead of W, I'm going to write 100 minus L. Okay. And so now this is in terms of a single variable. And that means that we can do some calculus on it. So I have my function in terms of length. Uh, I want to maximize this function because it represents the area. So let's take the derivative. A prime is going to be, I'm thinking about to make this maybe a little bit easier on myself. I'm going to rewrite L as being X. Just remember that L is X. Okay, so this is 100x minus x squared. That's easy to take the derivative of. I have 100 minus 2x. We set this equal to 0. Solve for x. I get 100 is equal to 2x. And so divide by 2, I get 50 is equal to x. Right. What are the endpoints here? Well, what's the smallest that X could be or the biggest? Well, it can't be any smaller than 100 or bigger than it can't be any smaller than zero or bigger than 100. And so I can think about those values. A, if I plug in zero, A, if I plug in 50 and A, if I plug in 100, if I plug in zero for A, I get zero times 100 is 0. If I plug in 50, I get 50 times 100 minus 50 is another 50. And so that would give me 2,500 feet squared. And then if I plug in 100, I get 100 times 100 minus 100, which gives me another 0. So looking at this, which one gives me my maximum? That's when x, the length, was equal to 50. And so my maximum is 2,500 feet squared. And this is when the length equals 50 and the width is 100 minus 50. And so that means the width is also 50 feet. feet. So notice what's, what's the rectangle that maximizes area here. Well, the length or the width are the same. And so really 
the answer is a square. That's 50 by 50. Okay, and actually that's kind of uh, not too much of a surprise. Often uh, the maximized rectangles in some way are squares. Um, that's just something to know. All of this junk right here. Wrote out everything we had. We knew we wanted to maximize area. That happens quite a bit. So let's talk about our strategy overall in doing this. So what was the first thing we did? So that was that problem. Um, so copied out the information, drew a picture, wrote down everything that we had. Right. Okay. Then we wanted to find the function to optimize. So the function we wanted to optimize was area. So if you remember, area was length times width. Well, this right now is two variables. So we rewrote it to be area was x times 100 minus x. So now this is a single variable where x is the length. So instead of having the area in terms of length and width, we rewrote it so that it was only in terms of length. Then it was in terms of a single variable. Now we could do the nice uh, finding absolute max and mins that we've been doing so far. And then once we had that, what did we do? We took the derivative, then we found the critical points and then points and checked them to get the absolute max and min. That is all for this video. See you again soon.